Hey everybody, it's Gil from aboard the sailing vessel Dream Chaser, though it's starting to feel funny saying that because it's been so darn long since we've been on the boat. I can't wait to get it back over here. More about that coming up during this episode. But I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. We took a trip across Florida's coast, uh, across Florida to the eastern coast, to what they call the Space Coast. We went and watched a, uh, a SpaceX rocket launch. It was really, really cool. I wish I'd have gotten better footage myself, but I definitely got a lot of good stuff to share with you if you didn't see that video. And then after that, we went over to uh, this Snake Emporium kind of place. Um, and I know that's not actually the name, but we took the girls over to see it. They love snakes. And we took them to this place where they were doing some live feedings and you could hold a snake and they were doing alligator feedings and the kids were so into that. So we took them over there as well. If you didn't see that video, if you're on a mobile device, I'll put a link to it right up in this particular corner where the little pop out cards. Um, if you're not on a mobile device, I'll put it down in the link below. Because of that, the last few months have been pretty different, right? Um, there's been a lot of travel videos and we've had a blast doing the traveling we've been doing. I hope y'all been enjoying it. You know, we did a three or four part series on our trip to Oahu in Hawaii uh, and all the adventures we had there. Um, when I came back, we did a little did a little trip to Vegas. Uh, it was a short work trip, but it was just an amazing, amazing hotel room. Uh, I'll put links to it up here if you didn't see those videos. But really exciting stuff. And then while we've been in the house, I've been playing around with um, with this new smoker and grill I have. Right, you know, I, I, I got to keep busy, and because I can't walk out immediately and start working on the boat, um, it means that I'm tinkering with other stuff. So I've been putting videos up, even on how we assembled, burned in, and different recipes we're doing in this pellet grill and smoker. So I know it's not sailing videos, but frankly, it's uh, it's keeping me busy and occupied and it's fun to do. And you know, those are going up too. I'm not doing those on the Friday episode. I figured I'd just put them up sometime over the weekends and you've probably seen a few of those as well. Um, I'll put a link to the series for anyone that didn't see it. In this week's video, we take our little power boat out from behind the house here and we um, we go and do a little fishing trip. Me and a buddy of mine, uh, we decided to go out fishing here in Charlotte Harbor and Boca Grande Pass. Uh, Boca Grande Pass is world renowned for tarpon fishing. We didn't get any tarpon. <laughs> but we had a great time. We had an absolute great time. Uh, the weather was beautiful. Uh, you know, the, the water down in that Boca Grande Pass, it's not quite as gorgeous as the Bahamas or Key West, but it's a, it's a shade of blue that frankly, being along the, um, the southern coast of the U.S., all the way from the tip of Florida um, to the tip of, of Texas, you don't see that stuff in most of that area. Um, so it's really exciting down here in Southwest Florida to be back in this blue water. So we'll take you out there um, from my house. Um, my buddy lives on his sailboat. They're cruisers as well. So uh, from our house, we kind of go out our canals down uh, the Charlotte Harbor, all the way sort of around toward Boca Grande Pass. Uh, and there at a marina, oh, that's probably two thirds of the way out from where I am to the Gulf of, the Me Gulf of Mexico. I'm staying warm behind the windshield this morning. Uh, so we popped in, he loaded in, we, uh, we went out, we did some fishing just in the harbor, um, you know, relaxing kind of stuff. Um, and we caught a couple of small snapper, not much. Um, and, then, uh, and then we kind of buzzed all the way out to Boca Grande Pass thinking, hey, you know, fishing's not great where we are. Maybe we'll get a few bites out there. It'll be a prettier scene. Um, and it was real nice. The tide was coming in, the wind was blowing inshore a bit. So we sat there in Boca Grande Pass, anchored for a couple of hours. Um, tons of dolphins and as great as that is doesn't mean the fishing's good by the way but it's a beautiful beautiful day to sit and relax in the boat shoot the bull and and uh you know fish if you will uh, i think we relaxed more than we fished uh, but we just sort of drifted after that we pulled the anchor up and just sort of drifted in for about the next hour and a half uh, and probably came in a couple of miles from where we started uh, and then you know finally ended up calling it a day i have a very tiny bit of footage of um of, of a fish we're actually catching uh, you know the reality is these things were they, literally they were snappers six or eight inches long they weren't even keepers but when you're not getting a ton of bites, that kind of stuff is action and you know, it's fun to catch him either way. So we caught a few of those and threw them back. I finally grabbed the camera quick enough when, when he caught one of the fish and I caught it just as he was pulling it up into the boat to remove it from the hook. So that's what the fishing was. We had a great time. Hope you guys enjoyed that part of the footage. Oh, that's pretty. 
It looked pretty darn relaxing, didn't it? I mean, that uh, the fishing trip was nice, the water was gorgeous, good friends, good times. Uh, it was it was definitely uh, it was definitely something to do again and again. Um, so we'll certainly be doing it. It's part of the reason why we got this power boat. We figured when you just want to buzz out there and go fishing, and you have three hours and twenty minutes of it's going to be to get out there. Um, what a great way to do it. So so far we're enjoying the heck out of the power boat. I am a little nervous about how well the boat and the sailboat are both going to fit in our yard. Um, <laughs> They are all together, end to end, they are almost the exact same length as our property line. I don't want to be that guy hanging over the neighbor into the neighbor's sort of uh, waterway area. So we're going to have to think about a creative way to, to park both boats right here behind the house. Um, and then once we get it figured out, maybe we'll put a boat lift in. I don't know. That down the road kind of stuff. So I have to tell you, it has been really, really odd. Really odd being away from Dream Chaser this long. I was thinking about this just a couple minutes ago. We put the boat in the yard in November. So it has been almost a two, two full years since we weren't on the boat full time living aboard. Now, we were in the boat yard for a full year. We stayed in the camper another three months after it was out of the boat yard um, while we were doing some more work internally in the boat, just easier to do it not living on the boat. So we stayed in the RV for a little longer, uh, finished some more of that work, moved back aboard the boat for another couple of months, let's call it three and a half. And during that three and a half months, um, would have been the April timeframe, that's when I went back up to New Jersey to help take care of my dad for a while. Um, and Deb stayed on the boat until the end of May or June. So she was there a little longer than I was with the girls. Uh, and then we loaded up the camper and we came to Florida to start searching for where that next place was. And my, my daughter uh, has continued to live on Dream Chaser. Uh, she keeps it up, takes care of it, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, so like, I, it's been almost two full years. Um, and that is odd for a boat that we have, we've lived aboard for eight years, uh, well, seven, seven and a half years up until that point when we put it in the yard. And we have loved I wouldn't say loved every minute of it. I wouldn't say every minute of it. We loved almost every single minute of that lifestyle uh, and we miss it terribly. Having the boat so far away, um, you know, a 12, 13 hour drive away, makes it really challenging when you wanna just pop out and do a quick project. Uh, and it means that projects are stacking up. So we wanna get the boat sailed back over here but we really can't do that until we get some work done on it. And it's difficult to get the work done on it without taking off, going back over there for a weekend, all right, between work schedules. And, you know, maybe I get eight, 10 hours worth of work in there. It's, it ends up being a sort of cost prohibitive from a, from a time and a cost perspective. But we wanna get the boat over here. We were thinking March, it's probably more likely gonna be April, definitely before hurricane season. So we don't have a ton of time to sail that boat from New Orleans down here into Southwest Florida. So let us virtually be on Dream Chaser here. Uh, because we had work that needed to be done, I needed to find somebody I could trust to do the work. The boatyard that did all the work for us that I just, I really liked those guys. I trusted them. We worked well together. Uh, I knew how they worked. Um, it, everything sort of just gelled in that environment. And I reached out, I would love to have them do the work. Unfortunately, the owner of that company sold the business. I don't have that same relationship with the new owners. Uh, most of the people are not the same people there anymore. So I just don't have that level of confidence with that, right? Um, so I started looking for somebody that could do work on the boat. And I've got some recommendations from other people that were in the marina where we were in there in, in Louisiana that had used this woman. Um, she runs Saltwater Marine is the name of the company. Uh, and she's an electrical engineer by trade and just wanted to spend more time on boats, right? So she's doing, you know, boat work. She has her own little company doing this. Um, and she came highly recommended. So anytime you start work with somebody you don't know, especially when you're not there to, to sort of supervise, see, and, and sort of inspect what's going on, there's, it's, like, it's like dating. You have to sort of figure out this relationship. How well does it work? Um, so I reached out to Angie and we talked about work I wanted to have done on the boat and said, you know, I, I want to start with something that I think is you know, fairly innocuous, fairly simple. Let's make this a test. It's a test for you to see how well you like working with me and how I like working with you. Let's figure out if this works. So the first project that we agreed to was um, <laughs> to work on the bilge pumps. I don't know if, I don't even remember if I ever published this video or not. Um, we had a problem with the bilge pumps. All the bilge pumps stopped working. And before we actually um, moved to Florida, when we took the camper to Florida, I replaced two of the three bilge pumps with new bilge pumps, wired them in the whole bit. 
A couple of months later, my daughter calls me. She's like, hey, there's water in the bilge and it's kind of deep. So we're trying to troubleshoot it and it's nothing obvious. It's not a fuse. It's not just a you know, simple wiring connection. Um, and, and my daughter's not, you know, she's not great with this electric stuff, right? She's more than willing to help and, and do the things that I've asked her to do. Uh, and she knows how to do the boat maintenance, but not repairs. So we probably spent four or five hours one day where this is when I was still in New Jersey um, with the, this phone on like face, uh, you know, Facebook Messenger video and she's down in the bilge holding the phone with her teeth and showing me what's going on with it while I have her crimping wires and, and I'm walking her through how to use a voltmeter and uh, it, I, I, I would almost say comical but frankly I don't know that it was comical to anybody else and it gave me heart palpitations candidly but um, but she was a trooper she did all that work on it and and we just could not figure out what was going on so in the end I wanted to make sure that we had a solution uh, I just ordered a you know an electric sump pump basically thing you know that you put in a, in a home sump and, um, and I said here this is what you got to do just when you when you drop it in there put it, this hose down in the, the galley sink turn it on, pump the water into the sink drain, it goes right overboard. So that's what she's been doing. But I needed to get these fixed, so I started. So that was the first job that we had Angie do. Um, and, and one other little piece of information about this, sometime after we did this whole thing where I was walking my daughter through how to troubleshoot it, uh, at one point we went back to the boat, I think it was around Thanksgiving time, and I stepped on the boat, and the first thing I want to do is like, how well will it start after sitting all this time, right? So I pop on the boat. I don't even go down below. I just open up the, uh, you know, the the controls, and I, and I turn the key on. And I start the boat up. Bum, 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 bum. She fires right up. And as I step from the helm and go down to the the companionway steps, I hear this. I'm like, what is that? That doesn't sound right. And I ask Deb, I'm like, you hear that? She's yeah. It started as soon as you hit the engine. So I go up there. I shut it down real quick. Well. When we had do, been doing all that work on the bilge pumps, one of the pieces of wire that we had been you know, testing and working on was looped up and it got hit, it got caught in the, in the belt in the front of the motor. Um, so it ripped it right out of the front side of the bilge pump. So that was one of the problems. <laughs> I had Angie do the work and that's what she found. One of the bilge pumps, the wires were ripped right out of the inside of the pump. Perfect, let's replace it. Um, we found some wiring issues with the other. It was actually a corroded ground on it. Uh, I'm sure once the water got up in there and we had this sort of issue with the first one, maybe that was what started to do it. Um, I actually thought I had done it correctly, so I'm really interested to see what really occurred there, uh, if I had a crimp failure somewhere or whatever. But anyway, it ended up being a, a bad ground, essentially. Um, but I had to replace two of the three pumps again. Um, she wired in a primary and a secondary, and then also a tertiary pump, um, you know, a high volume pump that for emergencies pumps 4,500 gallons an hour, or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we got all that stuff going. I also had her check out the shower sump, um, and it turns out there wasn't power to it, but with the bilge pumps working, I just said, okay, well, just let that go. We'll worry about that next time. So that was the first bit of work we did. Um, and you did a good job. We sort of communicated via text and phone call. Um, she would tell me when she was going to the boat. You know, I, I have these cameras that lets me kind of see what's going on. It's always nice to be able to know when somebody is coming and going on the boat. Um, and she did a great job. I, you know, the bilge pumps are working. Uh, I've not physically seen the connections down there, um, which I look forward to actually doing. But, you know, from everything I can tell and what my daughter's telling me, everything's working well. So I had a level of confidence in the work that Angie was doing. And I thought, you know what, I have a lot of other things that I would like to get done. And it certainly would be nice to have them done before I try to uh, go in town, wrap up a bunch of projects and then sail this sucker across the Gulf of Mexico. I just feel like that's a rush job and a pressure that I don't need and might have me make decisions that wouldn't be uh, the best for the trip itself. The next project we asked Angie to do was bow lights, and it's something her and I actually discussed. It's I'd, I'd been considering it, but wasn't really thinking about having her do the work, and she mentioned it to me, so I thought, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So we have a tricolor light at the top of the mast. It's perfectly fine when you're sailing. Um, however, if you think about being somewhere in close quarters, your average recreational boater isn't looking 70 feet in the air for navigation lights on a boat. Um, we have lights on the bow. One of them was not working. The actual uh, acrylic lens on the starboard side was broken. It was just an exposed bulb. Uh, so we knew we needed to replace those. And I ordered some LED ones at some point and they were sitting in a box. I just didn't get to installing them. So I asked Angie if she would put those on. She did, she you know, put, I, I actually ordered two brand new lights. So big LED, uh, the bright ones that will be seen from the distance we need for this size boat. Uh, I'm a big fan of oversizing things like that. Um, so we, we did so, new wires all the way back to the control panel and uh, bow lights now working just fine. 
that one behind us, it was now time to move on to the next item. And what we did was we sort of talked about small chunks of work like this. You know, let's do a project, let's do a project, let's do a project. So at any point in time, if it wasn't working out for her to be working on the boat or with me or the other way around, it was very easy to sort of stop the work and you weren't in the middle of some major sort of project. Um, but the next one was a pretty good size one. I really wanted some help with this. Uh, our boat has a good low friends Tigris uh, windlass on the bow. It also has one on the stern. One on the stern's fine, works great. Electric switch right back at the helm, all's good. Uh, the one on the bow, however, had a foot pedal um, switch, you know, the kinds of big, a big rubber sort of foot pedal switch and you push it and it comes up. When we had the decks redone, I pulled that up, we had the decks completed, and I didn't want to go back in with another one of those foot switches. I don't want to drill another hole in this beautiful new deck we had put down uh, with a bunch more screws in it. Just if there's a way to do it in a different way, I'd rather. And I've seen before, you know these industrial cranes that run along the ceiling and whatnot, a lot of them have this big yellow sort of handle and it has an up and down and move button on it. I wanted something like that, that I could open the forward companionway doghouse, you know, reach down, grab it off a hook, stand up on the bow, push the button, you know, I'm thinking like old school coily cord, like your telephone used to be in 1980, you know, and, um, and that's kind of what I was thinking we would use. So I talked to her about it and she's like, yep, installed a bunch of them. Um, do you want it to just come up or do you also want it to go down? Because your boat currently is wired for one single switch and it didn't have a solenoid. It was wired directly in. And she said, and those things, that's part of the problem. When they're wired directly in, if you've got a lot of chain out and you're sitting there holding that thing the whole time and all that amperage, which is a lot of amperage going to that big motor, is going through that switch and over time corrodes and melts it. So she goes, I typically install these things with a set of solenoids, right? So basically the, the solenoids take the brunt of that uh, high amperage. Um, and then the, the switch is just can be any sort of electronic controlled switch. It doesn't have to be a big beefy kind of switch itself. So that's what we did. And I have now a handheld control that sits right in the companionway. The downside of it is we couldn't find one that had a cord long enough to pull up from there and go all the way out on the end of the bowsprit with. So rather than having her cut that and extend it, you know, manually with, you know, figure there's got to be eight or 10 wires in that, in that cord, uh, we went a different route. We installed that. That's a great backup. And then they also have wireless key fob remotes now for windlasses. They're actually designed for, um, uh, for winches on the front of like a Jeep or an off-road vehicle. Uh, but it's the exact same thing. And with this solenoid system on it, it's a perfect way to go ahead and do this. So we wired those in as well. Um, Angie was telling me the good news is these things worked all the way up in the parking lot. So a good 150 feet away from the boat, you could still actually use the fob and control the, uh, the windlass. Um, what that means for me is we can have one for the person that's up on the helm, right? So Deb can have one in her pocket while she's standing on the bow of the boat and we're coming up to an anchorage. Um, I can also have one mounted right back on the helm station. So if somebody's not up there, we could lower the uh, anchor without having to go all the way up front. So it would make single handing a little bit easier. A little bit. 51 foot boat, cutter rig catch. Not a simple boat to single hand, but possible. So windlass done. That's awesome, right? So installed the solenoids, uh, both, both the, uh, the, the remote control system with the transmitter and the two remote fob receivers, and also the handheld uh, control switch. And you know, the windlass works great now. So I uh, love the fact that we have a working windlass on both the bow and the stern. I know the stern one seems a little odd and a lot of people are like, why would you do it? Well, I'd do it because it was on the boat and those things are good expensive windlasses and it gives me sort of a backup in the event there's a failure. So that project behind us, it was time to move on to the next one. And this one was a fairly simple one, but given her background, Angie's background with electrical engineering, it was one I definitely wanted to take advantage of her skill set on. So on our boat, we have the typical um, uh, switch that do you it's set to shore power when you're at the dock. You can turn it to the off position, which cuts all electrical um, currents off, and you can go to the generator side when you're gonna fire up the generator. And by doing that, it um, makes sure that there's never a chance in time when you would be getting power from two input sources. So you have to pass the off position to go to the second one. Now, so if you're going from shore to generator, it goes to the off first. If you're going from generator to shore, it goes to the off first. So you never have that um, risk of too much voltage and amperage coming into the system. So that switch had actually been loose. The barrel of it was loose in there. So had her go ahead and actually repair that. She said, I, I said, replace it if need be. And she said she was able to fix it. It was just the, the drum connected to the, the switch itself and everything worked fine. So we had quite a bit done from an electrical perspective. And with all that done, 
it was now time to start working on the next item. Oh, and by the way, in the background here, <laughs> all this discussion, you were probably seeing Angie popping on and off of the boat a bunch of different times. Uh, the windlass job was uh, sort of two days on the boat, uh, on and off. You know, she had to get parts and to start the work and then come back and finish up with the fob stuff. Um, so yeah, we got all that stuff done. It was great. A lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm sorry about the video. It's not a lot of action and whatnot here, but I wanted to share with you the updates and the details of what our plans were, what we intend to do, how we intend to sail the boat back, the work that's being done on it. Um, and maybe you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the footage behind me. I'm just, I'm just speeding up these little day briefs that come off of our security camera that we have. Um, and it is funny. I feel almost voyeuristic. I, I, I log in you know, multiple times a day and I look at the boat and you know, sort of daydream like, huh, I should be sitting right there on that boat, not sitting over here. Um, so I've just played some of those in the background here as we've been doing it, but it is nice. You know, you look down this, you kind of, you, you kind of look down here and see the, the sides of the boat and you know, the surroundings at the marina and it looks cold most days rainy and cold this is that time of year in new orleans just finished mardi gras season i think my daughter was telling me fat tuesday she went across lake pontchartrain down in new orleans went to a big parade right so it is definitely that cold time of year and uh, march april feels like the right time hurricane season starts early june so that timing feels pretty right to me um, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed that update. Um, I will put a link up top here for some of the videos I referenced earlier. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Safe sailing, y'all. Bye now.